Welcome to episode 79 of Beyond the Brick. I'm Joshua Hanlon, and Matthew is not back from Brick Fair yet, so it's just me on the show this week. But uh, I do have two awesome guests for you, and just a heads up, keep an eye out for a Brick Fair wrap-up on our YouTube page as well, so that should be coming soon, so that uh, you can hear everything. I know Matthew has a whole lot to talk about from Brick Fair. I think a lot of exciting stuff happened there, so definitely keep an eye out for a wrap-up on our YouTube page there. And as I said, two great guests for you this week. Uh, we have Steve Polson and Cody Otley with, with us, and they are part of Utah Lug, and also two of the founding members of Brick Slopes, a new Lego convention in Utah. So uh, you can find him on Twitter, Utah Lego Steve, and Brick Slopes is at Brick Slopes. Steve is 33 years old. He works two jobs. One is a satellite engineer, and then... Uh, he's a pizza driver for Domino's to pay the Lego bills, so <laughs> that's where he gets hey, the Lego yeah, money from. Anybody knows, right? This is not yep. a cheap one. <laughs> you got to get the money from somewhere. That's right. And and he's been a member of Utah Lug since 2009, when there were about 12 members, but it, there's now 93 registered members. So you'll usually have about 25 or so show up regularly to club meetings, and so it's great to have you two guys on the show. Hey, thanks, Joshua. It's good to be here. No problem. Appreciate you coming on. So I think we'll start off with some news this week. We don't usually cover much of the news, but I thought I'd get your opinions on this just real quick. Uh, the new Simpsons Simpsons theme that uh, was, was announced this week, and it, we actually had rumors of this a few months ago, but no one actually confirmed it, but it was actually announced for sure this week. So I thought I'd get your thoughts on that, and if you've seen the show, what you would think of a Lego Simpsons theme. Yeah, so it's kind of interesting. You and I were talking about this a little bit earlier, but the, uh, you know, I think about Simpsons, and I haven't watched it much. It seems like I got, so I guess an interesting story, right? When I was younger, my parents hated the Simpsons, so much so that my brothers and I, we, we loved it, right? We'd get out, we'd go out, oh, mom and dad left, let's turn on the TV and watch some Simpsons. And then time goes by and I got married my wife actually her family had the same sort of thing like no Simpsons in the house hated it right and so we got married the first thing we did right honeymoon suite we're there hey let's watch the Simpsons <laughs> we've had a Simpsons marathon and I think probably since that day we've never watched the Simpsons since so yeah I'll probably buy some sets or two as, as long as it doesn't become an excuse to have like all yellow bricks in the set mm-hmm Sure, I could see that being a problem, but uh, yeah, it, it should be interesting to see. I've never really watched the show myself. I'm somewhat familiar with it, but I certainly don't follow it or anything. But it should be interesting to see what kind of sets they are. And uh, we were talking earlier before the show about how it's it's definitely a bit divided the community somewhat. I know some people on both sides get uh, kind of riled up over this. And um, some people say, uh, I think that the main complaint would be the content of it isn't really kid friendly and that's Lego's core audience. So I think they're complaining about that. But what, did you have any thoughts on that, Steve? I'll let Cody take this one. So okay. as, as far as fans, right? So what about the Simpsons? They're yellow. So at least we'll get the yellow classic Lego figure. They're going to do some weird variation of the figs that aren't yellow. Could be interesting to see what they do. I, I enjoyed The Simpsons. I mean, I think it's funny that they're going that route because it is not as targeted towards kids. But I don't know. I'm kind of excited. I always like new things that Lego comes out with. So. Yeah, and I'll take that. I, I think the uh, probably the thing I'm mo I'm hopeful for, right? It, they'll probably find a way to disappoint me, but I'm I'm kind of excited to see a fat minifig. Yeah. I don't know how you do Homer and make him skinny. So I'm hoping there's, you know, some, we can have fat minifigs now. Yeah, maybe they'll put a neck piece on with a belly. Uh, like, yeah. <laughs> something like that. It'll definitely be interesting to see. And like you said, it's always nice when they come out with new themes and continue to innovate and bring new interesting things out. So kind of regardless of what the theme is, as long as they keep releasing new products and innovating, it's, I think it's a good thing for Lego. And if it sells well, helps the company out. So that's always nice. So I think we'll move on then to talking about, like I mentioned uh, in your introduction, the Brick Slopes convention that you guys are founding members of. And if you just want to give us a little overview of what that is and where that's taking place. Yeah, so I'll start us off, and Cody will probably just jump in here as we go through it. But um, So Brick Slopes, I guess, is uh, 
basically it's our it's our brainchild. We we've, we've been members of the the community out here in Utah for I don't know. I've been going on four years. Cody's probably what six, eight, ten. I don't know. Probably six years. Yeah. And then, right, the I can remember when I joined up with the club. Right, we walk I walk into the meeting and feeling a little like odd, like oh, who are all these weirdos? And then sit down and then uh, and the only thing I hear the whole time is a whole bunch of complaining. Right. The, if there's anything us as the Lego community are good at, we can complain, right? Th that's for sure. <laughs> we are amazing complainers. Like, Lego, you don't give us enough free stuff. Or, oh, Lego, you're coming out with a stupid Simpson scene, right? We're great at complaining. And, and so we, I, kind of going through that for a couple of years, you'd show up and everybody's like, oh, we don't got a Lego store, and we don't got a convention. Nobody gives us free stuff, right? And so I, I guess after a while, right, there's Cody and another guy who's, who's helping us out, starting this off, uh, Brian. We just kind of got to the idea and said, you know what? Let's stop complaining and make it happen. Now, it, yeah, there's – you know, hopefully it'll work out. I don't know. But, you know, we, at least we're going to try, try something and see what happens and hope the community will get behind us and make it fun for everybody. You know, me and uh, the vice president of Elug, Travis, we uh... – we actually went to BrickCon last year, and it was our first convention experience, and we were just so blown away going to the convention that it's like, we could do this at home, and it would be awesome. So me and Steve started talking about it, and Steve's like, we can do this. And he got me on board, and we went to BrickCon, and we were telling the guys there, like, hey, would you guys come to a convention in Utah, you know? Um, and what we found is a lot of the guys that are in the lugs, like New Mexico lug and Cal lug and Den lug, you know, there's not a good place for them to get to, but Utah's kind of central, you know, from all those locations. So we thought, hey, if we do a convention here, all those guys can come to us in the middle. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, and it, it's interesting, right? So when we when we started started talking about um, starting out the convention, it was interesting. I don't think there'd been a new con the most recent convention I can think of that started up was Brick Cascade, and that's probably been three, four years, right? No, all of a sudden we decided to do it this year, and there's there's four or five of us all of a sudden like, yeah, let's do another convention this year. <laughs> right? It's it's kind of crazy, but I think that part of that just shows how far Lego has come in the mainstream, right? Everybody's like, everybody loves Lego. Let's do a convention. That's definitely true, and I know uh, I if people who follow this show, I was interviewing uh, Chad Collins from Your Creative Friends. He's starting that Philly Brick Fest this year, so there's an example of another yeah. person starting a convention. And so kind of along that same line to people who say there are so many conventions now, why do we need another one? What would you say to people like that? Yeah, I would so I would say, you know, you can't have there's no such thing as, as having too many conventions, right? There's um, so Cody and Travis who was just talking about, right? The la last year was the first time I think other than Brian, who's another one of my members, the first time anybody from Utah I think's ever been to a convention. Yeah. And, and the same is true, like, each state around us, Denver, Idaho, Colorado, Wyoming, all those, there might be one guy in the state who's been to, who's willing to travel to a convention that was that far away. So, I think of it as, like, everybody should have the opportunity to go to a convention. It's just, it's a completely different experience where everybody there, right, awesome builders in all categories, all age groups, you get to be wowed, right? It doesn't matter what level you as a builder are at, you show up to a convention, you're like, this is cool. These are my kind of people, right? Mm -hmm. There's there's still there's still weirdos and they're strange, but you know what? You're one of those weirdos. Sure. <laughs> and at this current point, I mean, with the explosion of A Foles, you're gonna need more conventions. I mean, going to BrickCon's massive, but even Bricks Cascade, like me and C went to Bricks Cascade last year, and it was still. I mean, there are A Foles just coming out of the brickwork all over the place. So why not have a convention local for all the fans that are starting to come out and want to participate? Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Definitely. It's, it's always great to get another convention. And kind of like you were saying, I don't think you can really have too many. If, if people are going out to them, um, they're obviously enjoying them. So that's always nice. And what kind of things do you have uh, planned for the convention? Any events, vendors, things like that planned yet? Yeah, so we, we've got – we've actually – so I should I should add a caveat right up front is that stuff is subject to change right just like every <laughs> other convention on sure. earth we are we are reliant on 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 not necessarily the vendors but volunteers to help us out right somebody is running all of those games 
So if somebody, if some guy, the guy who's right, if he's running the Lego poker, decides, hey, I'm not coming anymore. If we can't find somebody else to handle that game, eh, it might get dropped off. But that being said, right, there are some things that we are committed. We've decided up front, like these are the these are the events when we go to a convention that were the best. These are the ones that we've got to make sure we have no matter what. So if if it has to be Cody and I there running this game, yeah. we will make it happen. We're gonna, uh, we're really going to try to make sure that everyone has a great experience. Um, we want to make sure that the AFOLs come, have a good time, and we want to make sure that the public has something nice to come see and enjoy. So we're going to do everything we can to make that happen. Yeah. So with that in mind, right, we've got, we think we've got, uh, so we've got Gary McIntyre, right? Everybody oh, yeah. knows Gary, mm -hmm. right? I think, <laughs> I think you, last week you had, you had Ian on, and he's talking about, um, you know, Lego Gary with his little ball, yep. right, that travels the world, <laughs> gets new places going, right? Even if people don't really know who Gary is, they're following a builder who's had Lego Gary at some point and done something. They know who he is. And so we've got him coming out. He's going to be the keynote speaker at the event. Very entertaining guy. Uh, and, and that was important to us. We've been to, I've been to conventions and been to, little, uh, to the panel discussions, and some of them are snoozers. Mm -hmm. There's there's somebody out there that probably hates me because I have fallen asleep in some of those discussions. <laughs> I'm back and I'm uh, right, getting the dirty looks because that's somebody's favorite builder up there talking. But we're trying to make sure this is going to be fun for everybody. So we've got Gary coming out. Uh, we've got some of those the critical games like I was talking about, right? So Lego Hold'em, right? You probably haven't ever played, right? 17 isn't going to work, but for those 21 or older, we're going to let them play. It's a blast, right? You just show up and then. You write all the, the TV build, the speed build, your blind builds, and uh, just a meet and greet where everybody just shows up, we'll just hang out and talk about whatever. At some point, somebody will be so plastered it won't be about Lego anymore. <laughs> but, all right, so, so the core stuff, the stuff that really makes it fun we're going to do, and as always, we're hoping that as people start registering and they, they want to get behind this and make it happen, that they'll pitch us some other ideas, something else they want to see happen, and hey, we... we what we're committed to is if somebody else wants to pitch something, want to do something, we'll do it, and we'll provide the prizes as long as we've got – if somebody's willing to run the event, that portion of the game, we'll provide the prize, we'll make it happen, and it should be fun for everybody. Sounds good. So you're open to suggestions then on things that people might want to do? Oh, well, yeah. Because oh, yeah. that's part of what makes a convention – like every convention's unique, right? You go to Brick Fair, it's not the same as Brick World. It's not the same as BrickCon. And a lot of that is who who shows up and what they what they want to make the convention be. Right? If if for some reason we get inundated by four thousand Bionicle members, I guess we're going to be a Bionicle con, <laughs> <laughs> right? But if by the other token everybody shows up and they're steampunk or castle, I guess we'll have a steampunk castle convention. Sure, makes sense. Yeah, I can see that. So you want to serve the people who are there, definitely. And yeah, they're the guys. They're the guys paying the money to show up and have a good time. So we want to make sure it's fun for them. Yep. Mm -hmm. So uh, about vendors, then, do you have any uh, planned vendors yet, or if someone wants to be a vendor, yeah. can they contact you yeah, and work think, that out? Think, yeah. So we've got we've got space for some more vendors, and we've already had I think six or six or eight of them have, have actually signed on already. Um, they decided they want to come and join us, but uh, yeah, we've got room for some more. I think we've. I think we've allotted space for 24 vendor tables, and so and when those run out, they'll be gone. But uh, right now, we're still open for some more vendors. And anybody, I guess anybody who wants to, is interested, they can contact us through the through the website. They can uh, send us an email, or they can for Cody here, uh, yep. Steve or Cody at brickslopes.com. We'll get back to them, make arrangements, and look forward to seeing them. We'll make sure to put the email address and website in the description of this video so that uh, you can check that out if you want to and email them with any ideas. I'm, I'm sure they're open to it. What was one of the biggest hurdles to starting Brick Slopes? I'm sure uh, starting any size convention cannot be easy, getting everything together, the tables, what, everything that has to go to convention. Were there a few things that really took you a while to do? Yeah, the, I would say that hands down, right, hands down the big biggest hurdle starting a convention is finding money. Um, I think it was a couple weeks ago you and I were talking about this, right, that as an AFOL, I get money and I go to the store and I buy Lego. <laughs> yep. I, the money does not sit in the bank account. It's, hey, I got money. I'm going to trade it in for some plastic. And so so that was the biggest hurdle. I think we went through, It was probably, we probably could have started two years ago if we'd have had money. <laughs> 
but it was right. It's just like, and especially lately, right? Like it was coming up with all this good stuff. You got the superheroes and the, the Hobbit and Lord of the Rings. Like, oh, just just taking all my money. So that's probably the biggest hurdle was was coming up with the money because everybody when you do a convention, everybody wants their money up front. You got to pay for the space. You got to pay for your tables, display stuff. It's it's crazy. But, oh yeah, yeah, it can get really expensive. I'm sure. So. It, kind of along that same lines, if it doesn't, uh, if you lose money this year, are you still going, planning on doing it the next year, or how's that going to work? Yeah, so uh, Cody might have a different opinion, right? But we're in this together, so I'm just going to go and rob his bank account. <laughs> we're just going to make it happen. Uh, that, that that being said, right, there, there might be a point, right, if we go and have his convention and nobody shows up, yeah, we might reconsider doing it next year, but... If everybody, if people show up and we have a good time and it's fun, yeah, we're gonna do it again next year, come money or not. It, it, we're, de it, we're determined to make this a longevity kind of thing. This is our baby, and we're gonna hang on to it and nurture yeah, it, yeah. And grow it. So. Yeah, anybody who gets into the Lego hobby in any form and you're doing it as a short-term thing, you've missed the boat, right? It, mm -hmm. it, and it, it's just, uh, it's just too, it's too, there's too much that's an option, right? It's I don't know, it's Lego, you just gotta do it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's definitely a long-term thing, because like you said, it's expensive, and once you buy it, uh, you, it's not really play with it for a bit, or build with it for a bit, and then move on to something else. Right, yeah, and I guess I should probably do a little shout-out here, right? So, I've, so you've just voiced this concern about making money or losing money, and I gotta say, so, lots of people, I, I don't think he's been on the show, but Todd Webb, right, runs the Brick Fair events? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I'm just gonna tell you right now. I'm not worthy. I salute him. Um, he is. He was instrumental in getting us going. He was more than willing. Right. This is one of the things I love about the community. Anybody wants to have a question, there's somebody out there that's willing to share it with you, help you out. Odd was that guy for us. Didn't matter what question we we had. He was one of like, oh yeah. I'd, I'd ask him a simple one line question. I'd get a two page email back. <laughs> like, here's how you do it. Don't do this because these people are trying to screw you and do this and that. I was like. This guy's amazing. That's great to have a resource like that, somebody that, that'll help you out like that. Like you said, I mean, the LEGO community definitely is great for something like that. Any questions you have online or any any questions at all, you can find somebody to answer them. And it's definitely encouraging, especially if you're a new member of the LEGO community, when you have something like that. Yeah, and it, it, it just reinforces that, right? You, We all kind of think, like, if I ask a guy how to build something, he's going to help me. But if I ask a guy, like... Uh, how do I not lose money on this? You would, you don't know. I don't know. I didn't necessarily expect anybody to come. Like, oh yeah, sure, I'll help you out. Now, Todd was the guy all over. Like, sure, help you out. And honestly, with the model, it's the way it is. I mean, we know the structure. We know how to do it because you know they've given us that support. I'm pretty sure we can make this successful without too much hassle. Yep. Well, that sounds really good, and it sounds like you're on the right path then for a great convention. So I uh, just want to cover a few more details of it here so that people have a little more information. You want to give dates for when it's happening and then uh, what the registration will cost for people who might be interested in going? Yeah, so uh, is, so our first convention will be May 1st through the 4th, uh, 2014. So that's the first week of May. Uh, for, for the guys here on the West Coast, not a big deal. If you're on the East Coast and wanting to come, that might be a little bit of a diff of a difficulty, right? Because we've got we're a sandwich now. There is there's Philly Brick Fest the week before us. There's then there's us, and the week after is Brick Fair, right? So guys on the East Coast, if you're wanting to hit every convention out there, that's going to be a lot of travel. But <laughs> on the West Coast, wide open. Mm -hmm. And then uh, right now, so registration right now is fifty bucks. Uh, so that's and that'll we'll keep that uh, that rate up until sixty days before. The convention starts. At which point we'll move to move it to a fifty-five dollar fee, just because um, that's the point when we've got to have other stuff done. So that's a motivator to get people to register, so we can get a count and figure out what all sets and badges and stuff we have to buy. Sure. So what all will registration include? Is there badges and things like that? Yeah. So lots of guys are lots of guys are going away from the brick badges, but we are going to do the brick badges still. That will get that'll get everybody into into the into the event, so they'll have open access to every every part of the convention, all the panels, all the discussions, all of the games, right? Um, so that's pretty much an all-access pass. Mm -hmm. 
Sounds very good. So, uh, like I said, I'll have links uh, to everything to do with the convention in the description below. Their Twitter and everything where you can find them, Facebook. So, if you want more information on that or contact them, definitely look in the description of this video so you can check that out. So, I appreciate you guys telling us about that. And I think we'll move on to some of your LEGO history now for both of you. You guys can both tell us about this and... Uh, kind of get where you guys are coming from and give a little more information about that. So, Steve, if you want to start, how did you kind of get into Lego? Oh, this is probably my favorite story to tell. <laughs> um, so I, I like to tell people I've never had a Dark Age, right? Everybody talks about the Dark Age. But I've never had one because I didn't start playing with Lego till four years ago. Okay. Uh, so I didn't I didn't have it, right? Everybody else, you think of this as this Lego is this childhood toy and we're all playing with it because it's reminds us of our childhood, right? Mm -hmm. Lego doesn't remind me of my childhood. It's just <laughs> it's just awesome. But um, so the story, right, I was talking about my wife a little bit earlier and uh, before I got into Lego I was an avid video gamer. I loved to play, you know, Halo, Battlefield, Modern Warfare, right? Lots of first person shooters, lots of blood, lots of gore. And uh, and I didn't think much of it, right? No. So and I've got four kids now, and my two my two sons were four and three at the time. And they would come down in the basement, and I've got I'm playing this, and they're coming in, they're just they're, they'd sit down in the chair and watch dad blow the heads off of all these little off these pigs, right? And my wife comes down one day and she catches catches the kids like, You gotta stop wetting the kids, watch the violence. <laughs> they're gonna shoot people. <laughs> right? So so that kind of went on for a little bit. I'd keep playing, and they'd come down, and I was too enthralled, right? It, I don't know why, but it's it's very therapeutic to blow somebody's head off. <laughs> <laughs> but so so finally it comes to a head, and I decide, all right, so I want to be – got to – let's try and be a better father, right? So I get we go and uh, decide we're going to get a, a game that I can play with the kids. And, and so we went to the store, and there's Lego Star Wars. Um, the complete saga that's on clearance. It was like ten bucks or something. And even though I had never played with Lego, I kind of know well Lego. That's as kid friendly as you can get, right? <laughs> so we buy, we buy that. I bring it home, start playing that. We play it for a couple weeks, and we go. We're back in the stores this one day, and my oldest Porter, he is as we're going through the store. He's just looking around, like sees this this Lego set on the shelf. Dad, that's from the video game. We gotta buy it. <laughs> so, so right, we go, we, we grab, grab that and bring it home, and, and he's four, right? The thing's like, I think rated 12, 12 and older or something for build age. So, yeah, he looks at it, and he doesn't build a thing, and I start building it, and I was just the end, like, this is awesome, I'm, look at this thing. So ever since then, right, it's, it just took off, like, so, yes, for people who hate the Lego video game, I am a self-confessed convert to Lego because of the video games. I don't play them anymore, but that's how I got here. <laughs> so there's a good testimonial for Lego video games, so if it does get some people into the community then. Now you mentioned that you uh, didn't play with Lego as a kid. Was there some other toy that you did play with a lot? No, I, I, I tended to play uh, Cowboys and Indians. There was a big empty field next to my house. So, I mean, I guess my family grew up pretty poor, so we didn't have toys and junk. We just whittled bows and arrows and stuff and shot them at each other. Which, Lego's a lot safer. For any parents who might happen to watch this, right, not having Lego, playing Cowboys and Indians, I burnt the field down across the street from me and had the cops and the firefighters called on me. <laughs> so, get your kids some Lego, save yourself a headache. <laughs> I, it, I, I, my kids have tons of Lego. I don't want any firefighters coming. That is true. It is hard to catch on fire, so you shouldn't have that much that much of a problem with that. Well, and you're not bored anymore, right? I was bored like, hey, there's an Indian in there. Let's, I'll light the field on fire. That'll smoke him out. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like maybe it was more of you as a kid than an overall problem. <laughs> <laughs> it might be, I might have been a horrible child. I don't know. <laughs> Either way, I try and keep my kids entertained. <laughs> That's good. So then how about you, Cody? What's kind of your history with Lego? Oh, it's, yeah, so when I was seven, I actually got my first Lego set, and it was the Black Seas Barracuda, right? And everybody knows that set. That's, like, one of the most iconic pirate ships that Lego's ever made, and I still have it in my Lego room now. Um, so got that, 
then I started doing a small like city layout as a kid, you know, hit the dark age, high school, kind of into college, you know, there's that, I was still buying things, you know, pod racers came out, I was like, yes, got to have pod racers, but then I didn't really get back into it until about 2007, uh, I found ULUG, and then I just have become super obsessed now. Now I have a full Lego room, and I just keep growing and growing, and it's become quite massive. My wife is very understanding. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We around here, people in Utah, we we for the most part hate anybody who likes the collectible figures hates Cody, right? Yeah. He takes time out. He's got like every series in like multiples of ten. <laughs> I'm, I'm just a really big collector, so I uh, I have when series two came out and the Spartan came out, I ended up ended up I was trying to get three hundred because I wanted to do that scene from three hundred. But uh, ended up with 100 Spartans, which a lot of people don't like me for, especially here in Utah. <laughs> Did you clear out every retail store for 100 miles? Pretty much. <laughs> Pretty much. So, yeah, I, n- I never heard Steph some good collectible minifigs. Those are neat. No. I can understand that. <laughs> it's been the worst. I mean, kudos to Lego because it suckered me in, and I just keep buying figs. Like, I cannot stop buying figs. <laughs> So you mentioned that you joined the Utah Lug there a few years ago, and I gave a little bit of information about that at the beginning of the show, but do you guys want to elaborate on that and uh, what the meeting's doing and if you guys do any shows? Sure, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll take that. Yeah, take answer, it. Right? So uh, uh, yeah, Utah Lug, uh, we uh, started – actually, it's funny because since we have Gary coming, uh, Gary and Brian, the other member of our group that started Brick Slopes, were actually founding members of ULUG. So it's kind of nice to have Gary come back. Um, But, yeah, those two founded it. Uh, They met up with uh, Reed Cowan, who is our train guy from the uh, Great Basin Lego Train Club. So we kind of morphed into one club. We've been doing train shows for, oh, many years. Reed's been doing it for 20 years. The Utah Lab has been doing it for about seven years. Um, We do three, four train shows a year, and... Yeah, it depends on the year, but yeah. so I think I think the first year we did like seven or some insane number. Yeah, we, we we've hit a lot of train shows, but now we're starting to branch into other things. We're going to do a county fair coming up next week, and then we're actually going to do Salt Lake City is actually going to have their own comic con, so we're actually going to go display at that comic con as well. But yeah, the club has just exploded because the fans are just like I said coming out of the brickwork. So. Yeah. Well, that's neat that uh, Salt Lake City will have its own Comic Con. So, what kind of stuff are you guys planning on bringing to that? So, most of us will bring. Steve's going to bring his Helms Deep. Me and Steve kind of did a duo kind of theme. I did an Isengard. He did Helms Deep. Uh, we're going to have Jurassic Park, the scene, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, space, city, trains. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of the city stuff will have a heavy influence of superheroes, right? Got another guy, the member of the club, who's he hasn't unveiled it to anybody yet, but he's got the, uh, oh, come on, Hall of Justice. Oh, yeah. Hall of Justice that okay. he's bringing. So, yeah, you know, heavy, heavily influenced by Comic-Con, heavily influenced by comics. Nice. So I think I'll talk about some of your builds here then. And, Steve, one of your builds that I wanted to mention that was just really neat is this Helm's Deep build you did. And I remember thinking how cool this was when it first came out, and I wasn't familiar with you then as a builder. So then when you when I saw that you had built this, I thought it was really cool and impressive, and I wanted to make sure we talked about it. So uh, this looks absolutely massive. How many feet big is this? So from the, from the left-hand side to the right-hand side is nine feet. Oh so from, wow! <laughs> so if you're looking at the tan on the one side, right, and then the edge of the edge of the mountains on the other, that's nine feet, and then from the front to the back is six feet, and then the the tower portion, right, the the horn, that's the highest portion, of it, it's about three feet tall. Okay, very and, cool. Yeah, it, yeah, it's this is probably I'm gonna take I'm gonna trample all over your script right now, but that this is probably the of all the builds I've ever done, this is the one I'm the most proud of. Took the most time, um, and it part of it. It's partially upsetting. I think everybody in the community has decided I'm going to build a Helm's Deep. There's like 40 Helm's Deeps out there, and every one of them is awesome in their own right. But the coolest thing for me about building this one, right? This is the this is probably the first and only build I've ever had that was blogged by anybody. 
But uh, when I put this up on Flickr, I had a, a pro account back before Flickr went and screwed everything up. <laughs> but uh, and so with the pro account, right, I can watch the page views come in, and it'd show me where people were coming from. So the so the best part is you could get. I'd click on the refer on Flickr, and it'd take me off to the the website that was referring people to the link. And so and I ended up in all sorts of crazy weird places and watching all the comments. And I can remember. I, Right, I was I was somewhat angry. I went to this one. I can't even remember the website anymore. But there was somebody looked at. It and there was the comment. Right, it was like, "There's not enough army people on there." <laughs> and and I, I guess that's a valid complaint, right? There's supposed to be hell, thousands of these, right? But then I go. But part of it was like, this guy has never built anything because those stupid figs cost five bucks a piece, right? Oh yeah, that's yeah. Five hundred bricks. <laughs> I learned long ago that uh, when your stuff gets blogged by someone, you don't want to pay atten too much attention to the comments because a lot of times <laughs> it's probably yeah, I, not so, the best. You know, I, I got over it eventually. It was just like, really? <laughs> this is your comment? There's not enough figs on the thing? <laughs> what he's not telling you is that's where I help him out because I'm the obsessive fig guy, so I actually built him a little bigger army. That you don't see in the Flickr picture. Yeah, this this picture. Yeah, this the picture there. When we display this, there's four or five of us in the in the the Eula group, and everybody brings their 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 Urukai, and we all put them out. So there's thousands more than you see in this picture yeah. that show up. But because I put this up in my basement, and, and to take the picture, I had to suffice with what things I had. Mm-hmm. So did what? How did the rock work work out then? Because I know that's about the most impressive part to me. That's super cool. How you all that detail you got in that was that just uh, a lot of experimenting with that, or did you just kind of where did you start with that? Yeah. So um, I had a vague idea of what I wanted it to look like, right? So the most of the rock work and what you can't tell from the picture either is that because we do lots of shows, every one of these. This entire thing comes apart into little 32 by 32 base plates, right? The stud base mm -hmm. plates. So that was the hardest part is when I was butting two base plates up together to get it so the rock work could stack and it could still come apart. But so, yeah, it was mostly just a lot of experimenting. and just uh, that kind of looks right. And, and, any, and it's almost all of it is one by two slopes just turned this way and that way. But, uh, and so I'd get going on a little bit and I'd step back and I'd look at it and go, oh, that's just this big long pattern, and just didn't look right. So you to rip it down and start again. Uh, it took, I guess, it took me four months to build this thing. Almost all four months of that was just stacking bricks and restacking them. It was it was painful. <laughs> I could imagine. I mean, yeah, the, the you got it really great in the end, though. The detail is great, and the the castle looks very nice as well. Did you just uh, take apart a lot of Homes Deep official sets, or what? How did you do that? I, I, that was my original plan, actually, when I decided I wanted to do it. Right? Was I'll just I'll just go buy me like like this Helms. That was actually the inspiration. Is I saw the Helms Deep set and I built one. I was like, this thing is piddly small for what this should really be. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, but if I bought like six or eight of them, that should work out, right? <laughs> so I bought six or eight of them and I started putting it together and. It doesn't work out at all, right? When when Lego builds stuff, they're 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 trying to make it look right, the sort of the aesthetic, and then they've got their cost considerations. So you've got right in the the Lego version, right? They've got panels, tons of these panels, and they're ho I, for what I was trying to achieve, they were horrible. It just big blotches of gray in it. So, sure. So yeah, so in the end, I just I I got what I could out of them. I took all the the, the brick bricks that they had started coming out with and the tiles and the slopes and the little one by two green pieces and then everything else was just brick link orders. I, I, my wife probably still hates this thing because I, I probably put $2,000 on brick link orders to build this. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, but I, that, I'm not surprised since it's nine feet. So it is so huge. What did it take to photograph this? So did you do this in your house or... Yeah, it's actually I actually photographed it in the very room we're sitting right now. So I have a I don't I don't know if you want to I can show you my the, where I put it together if you want. But sure, it's, yeah, I, go ahead. So, ugh. so I'll just move the camera here for a second. Everybody's getting dizzy, right? 
It'll be worth it. You can hold through the camera shake. So, so I'm kind of over here in the corner, and you can kind of. So I've got this table here. That's it's six feet by nine feet. That's how the dimensions of Helm's Deep came about. That's as big as I can make it on the table. And so, yeah, I just okay. put it on the table, and then uh, when it was time to photograph it, I dropped a white bed sheet behind it and took a picture, got out Photoshop, and away we went. Very cool. Yeah, th thanks for showing that to us. That looks neat. I really like that. Yeah, I, for anybody who's busy, I couldn't really tell what I was showing you guys. But, <laughs> but I think it was it worth out. it. You got to see his build area. <laughs> <laughs> so besides Brick Slopes this year, are there any other conventions that you think you'll be able to make it to? Yeah, I, so I don't know. I, I hope to make it to Brick Fair, right? I probably the one just passed. So their their next one I'm hoping to just because Todd was so helpful to us that I really want to go and see this guy and right he take him in person. Yeah, thank you in person and just hanging out. Right, everybody talks about right. It's one of those iconic ones: Brick Fair, Brick World, and Brick Con. Uh, so he's he's up to the top of my my list. Brick Con used to be at the top of my list, but I have the unfortunate luck that uh, for me, I have my job. Brick Con happens right now on the. The old one of the only two weeks I can never get off of work, so I'll never be at BrickCon until I get a new job, or they get so big they change the date. <laughs> but so yeah, Brick. I want to go to Brick Fair. I'd love to go to Brick World. Both of those are are up there at the top of my list. Mm -hmm. Brick World is very neat, and I don't know if you've had a chance to check out any of our interviews from there, but uh, we're continuing to post those, and it's it was a lot of fun getting those. So. It was very cool. If you could make it, that'd be really neat. Yeah, that, it's on my list, right? You guys do a great wrap-up of that, and, just, and especially when you're walking around the show, show floor. Ah, it just fills me with envy. Like, I didn't <laughs> That's, That was kind of our goal. We wanted people to feel like this as much as possible that they were there, so I hope we succeeded in that. You, you, I don't know that you made me feel like I was there, but you made me wish I was there. <laughs> I guess that's as close as we could get then. Yeah, yeah. It, it was good enough, right? <laughs> yeah, I was happy how it, with how it turned out in the end. But now, uh, something that e either of you guys can, or both of you guys can answer this: uh, Did either of you guys have kind of a strategy as you built your collection up, or buying stuff from Brick League regular sets? And have you ever had any interesting interactions with uh, Lego people in stores or online or anything? So I think I'll, I'll let Cody take this first, and then I'll fill in later, right? But I've got I have some I have a great some great stories, but I'll let Cody start it out. So so I'm probably terrible because Toys R Us gets all the exclusives, right? So mm -hmm. you go to Toys R Us, you're like, oh, I want that set, so you buy it. But then you see other people looking at these things, and you're like, oh, don't buy that; it's cheaper at Walmart, right? <laughs> buy it on Amazon, right? So uh -huh. <laughs> I've got to stop doing that, but. Um, for me, like just building up my collection, the biggest thing now, since I joined the lug and started learning how to actually buy smarter, so, and like, I buy multiples of sets now. It's not just, I'm going to go buy one set, I buy like five sets so I can accomplish what I want to build. Like he was saying with the, the Helm's Deep, you know, he bought like six or eight. It's a great way to bulk up and... Some of my best mocks have come out that I need to get on Flickr, but just buying multiples. Like, I did a, a Persian theme from Prince of Persia, but I just bought so many multiples of the Prince of Persia line and then just slapped something together, and it just worked out so perfectly because of the way they designed the sets, and it's just having all that access to extra, right? Because mm -hmm. you build the one set, and you're like, oh, how could I make this better? Just keep it with <laughs> Tom's theme. Yeah, that's kind of how I've really bulked up... Uh, do you, yeah, have, I, I, do you have any tips sorry, then, real quick, for, uh, you mentioned that you've kind of started buying smarter for sets and pieces and stuff. Do you have any tips for people who might be looking into that, like how to save money and things they could do to get sets at cheaper prices? You know, honestly, I have come to love Amazon and Amazon Prime. It is amazing. I mean, just a couple days ago, I've been, I've been building this Roman Calvary, and, uh, I need more horses, so what I do, go to Amazon, buy the stagecoach set, it's five bucks off, there's no tax, free two-day shipping, bam, I have like 25 horses now. So, <laughs> yeah, it's just a good way to do that. that. For me, that's what I've been doing. 
Yeah, Amazon I, I, is a great source I've found. Go ahead, Steve. I was going to say, so I think I've learned, I'll tell this story first, right? So bulking up, as I was building my collection when I first started out, I, I was kind of in Cody's boat. I love the love the Amazon, the no tax thing, right? It's like our sales tax isn't horrendous out here. It's like 6%, but it's an instant 6% savings, right? Mm -hmm. You're watching it. Amazon's always got a sale on something. But uh, I had been doing that one day, and I left my laptop downstairs, and my wife called me to go do something. and So I go away, and I come back, and I didn't know it at the time, but while I was gone, my kids had been going on the Amazon just scrolling through all the all the Lego stuff they can find, and and I had enabled their one-click feature. My kids had gone through and just one-click like every Lego set on Earth. <laughs> so... It was like the middle of the next week. I'm at work, and my wife calls me, and she's just angry. She's like, why are you buying all this Lego? <laughs> right? And it's, it wasn't me. It was my kid, right? They had, they had gone out, and they had maxed out the credit card. They Amazon had stopped shipping Lego when my credit card maxed out. And so I just had these piles of Lego coming in the house. And I mean, I, I told my I told them, I was I, – had to chew the kids out, right? You just had to, but I was secretly like, you guys rock. This is awesome. <laughs> We're not going to tell mom. We're just going to, yeah, this is sweet. Let's keep them, but it's your fault. <laughs> <laughs> no, the secret is that you actually put them up to it, and then you just acted like they did it on accident. Well, that part right? we're not telling anybody, right? <laughs> this, is, this is hush hush, talk, right? Nobody knows. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, that was, I, I slipped him a fiver beforehand. I'm like, I'm going upstairs. Make sure you push the button off. <laughs> That's a great, great Lego buying strategy there. So there's another tip. Yeah, blame, have your kids do it and blame them. And you're in the clear. Mm -hmm. If you're having trouble getting your significant other to uh, let you buy some Lego, <laughs> that might be a good strategy there. <laughs> Worked. Yeah, and it was, it was actually after that happened, my wife was like, well... I'll, I'll open a Bricklink store. We'll make our money back that way. That's that is probably I've heard of other people trying to do that. But that is probably the worst strategy I know of. And, oh, and, and I guess for me personally, right? Because I'm not a collector. I, I'm primarily a builder. I wanna I want the pieces so I can build stuff. And so inevitably, I was try, I had a store. I was trying to list the pieces I thought I would never need. Right? All those red, yellow, and blue things that everybody hates. Mm -hmm. And it it never failed. A week after I somebody bought out everything I had, it'd be like, crap, I need those stupid red two by four bread. The worst of this happened. <laughs> so yeah, for me that never worked. I mean I know it works for some people. That I didn't I don't know. Bricklink's for buying, not for selling. Yeah. I could see how that could be a problem. I'm sure if you don't uh, dedicate yourself and discipline yourself to not taking all the bricks, then the store doesn't work <laughs> out very good in the end. <laughs> Yeah, it didn't work well at all. <laughs> well, our wives are going to be real happy in September when the Lego store comes too. So that'll be that'll be, that'll be a good time. I'm yeah, sure. yeah. So yeah, it's been, it's banner year for Utah, right? We've got we get a Lego store coming. We got a convention coming. We've got the the original founder of the club coming back. It's it's banner year for Utah. Yeah. But yeah, our wives are not going to be so happy. <laughs> Well, that's awesome. So a lot, lot to look forward to if you're in Utah and joining the LEGO community or already part of it. You'll have a lot of cool events to do. So I think we'll end the interview out with, uh, if both of you guys can answer this, if you could choose like a dream LEGO set that you would really want LEGO to make and be able to sell, what would it be? So I think they've already made the LEGO set I want, but it's not commercially available. Right? I want the Volvo car that they have at Legoland. <laughs> I, would, I want to drive that thing down the street and right, just, yeah. <laughs> that, that's my dream Lego set. Mm -hmm. I don't know. They keep coming out with too many things. I mean, I would love a re-release of the Barracuda just because it's close to my heart. But uh, I don't know. There's just too much. There, there's too many good things right now. I, uh, I really want the, the Isengard tower because I built a six foot version of that as well and so oh, okay. I want that. yeah I want to stick it next to mine so I can be like see it's only that tall <laughs> look at how much better mine is <laughs> yeah pretty much but... yeah yours has a back and a front yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
That would that would be cool. So you'll have to get that and take a picture of it next year's and show everybody what what they can what they're missing out on with, since they don't have your build. Yeah, exactly. Well, I think that wraps it up for us tonight. Actually, it was... we're gonna, I'm gonna step on you again. Oh, sure. Go ahead. No, go. No problem. So I've been saving this, right? So you had a you had a guest on the show. I think your last show, right? Yes. Uh, everybody, I'm hoping. So I guess yeah. let me see if you can make it so you can see this. Right? Everybody can see him, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I think I know. Well, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna mention who this is, right? But your your regular viewers should probably know. So we what we want to do is we're gonna do a contest um, for everybody on your viewers, right? So brick salt for getting up. What we have here, so your 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 prize, right? For the winner of the contest is gonna be a free pass, right? So a free registration pass to Brick Slopes in 2014. So for the next two weeks, um, we're going to take entries. What we want is somebody to, to tweet us at our Twitter account, at Brick Slopes. Tell us who this is. And, uh, and, most, and in the most creative tweet that can somehow tell us who this is, right, regular name, flicker name, whatever, uh, we'll take all those valid entrants, and we're going to give and the winner out of those right random prize drawings is going to get a free pass to Brick Slopes in 2014. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I think I, I think I might be able to guess. I won't give it away, but I think I can guess who that is. So. Yeah, well, and, 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 and I, I turn about fair play, right? Because in your video, you can you can never see below his waist. So yeah. I just imagine that he's got red boxers on and some pink fluffy <laughs> slippers. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> so, right. People should have a lot of fun with that. So you want to give your Twitter account real quick again? Yeah, so, so people... that's, it's at Brick Slopes. Okay. And so, so for the next, next two weeks, right, tweet us at Brick Slopes. Let us know who it is. Um, obviously, like I said, most creative tweet that still lets us know who this is is going to get the prize. <laughs> so make sure you tweet them and send that out to them, and definitely you'll get an awesome prize for that. And I appreciate you unveiling the, the cool build here, and it's always nice when people people do that with the show. So I really enjoy that. That's very neat. Thanks. <laughs> hey, not a problem. And what we'll do, Joshua, if that works for you, is we'll uh, I'll send you a, an email when we've picked the winner, and I'll let you announce it on the show. So you can definitely. just add that to your news items list, and then, uh, yeah, we'll go from there. That'll definitely work. So I'll make sure to put, like I said earlier, put their Twitter in the description so you won't miss out on that and can send that to them. And I'm sure they'd love to hear from you on that. So thanks thanks for unveiling that. That's really neat. And I hope well, hope you get a lot of people tweeting you from that. I'll make sure to post it wherever I can. All right. Thanks, Joshua. Yeah, no problem. It was great having you on, Steve and Cody. I look forward to talking to you some more in the future and keeping up with everything that's going on in the convention. And I, I wish you best of luck with that convention and look forward to hearing how it goes. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So that's all for us tonight. I'd encourage you to subscribe to the YouTube page if you want to keep up with all the great content that we're releasing here at Beyond the Brick. And you can catch all our Brick World coverage, our latest episodes and everything. Just subscribe to the page. It doesn't cost you anything, and you can keep you up to date easily with everything we're doing. Thanks for watching, everybody.